Well, I'm back with an update about my houndstooth warp that I'm putting on. I don't know what, it's probably about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been very busy today. Got it at 6 o'clock of the morning, this morning. Um, so I guess the last place where we were at, and I've skipped some round. Well, not skipped around. I've done more than, you know, the last time. I just threaded two inches uh, in these harnesses. I, mean, I keep calling them harnesses or pedals. And um, so, and I sometimes say that's 23 inches the warp across there or the um the strings but or 22 inches and it's it is 23 inches and well after i threaded all of those uh threads strings through the eyes of these heddles maybe i'll i can show it up close maybe i don't know One thing I never wanted to be and knew that I it wouldn't do is a teacher. So I'm just showing you. So, you know, I threaded all of these warp. This is called warp threads. And I threaded them through all of these. One, two, three, four harnesses. And there were a couple of mistakes that I made, but um, as I made them, instantly almost, I noticed, you know, it was a mistake. And that's kind of how it works now. But what I didn't show you, I guess, well, is me threading these threads. See, all these threads are lined up, one, two, three, four, you know, and they can't cross each other because of these little things are in the place. So I thread those through this is called a reed. This is the beater to beat the thread back, but there is something in there. I'll get one that's not in there. These are so old. I bet they're a hundred years old. I should find one that looks kind of decent. Here's one. Okay. This is called a reed. And you unscrew that and unscrew the other side, lift this off, and I can take this reed out and put this reed in. This reed here is, these are called dents. Where's, I can't find my finger. Dents, so there's like five dents per inch. On this reed that's in the loom, there are six dents per inch. And since there are 12 strings per inch, what I did was, you know, thread two threads in each dent. And I woke up this morning at six o'clock. I got up and almost not why I forget and probably had a cup of coffee, did a few things. And then I just came out here and sat down. And I just got the urge to uh, thread the warp through this reed. And then I, you know, lashed. You can kind of see what happens then. The warp would come here and I would tie it. Uh, and that'd be another series of. Um, 
videos. But anyway, so I stretched it on. It's ready to go. And I'm trying, and there's no mistakes. This thread here at the very beginning just helps spread the warp, these strings out evenly. As you can see, they're kind of like down here, and then, you know, they spread out evenly. And then up here was the first uh, pattern, a weaving a pattern that I did that, to see if it was going to be houndstooth check. And when I looked at it, I go, no, oh, it's, it's, I don't know uh, how successful it will be. But, and then when I went somewhere, came back home, and then I looked at it again, and it looked different. So after these, whatever I weave on this, after it's woven, I'll take it off, tie the knots in the fringe, and then I'll wash it. And that has to be done. So that it's like when you crochet a sweater, I mean, or knit a sweater, you know, after you get done doing that, then you wash it, let's say in cold water, very gentle soap, and just push it up and down with your hands. You don't put it in a washing machine and wash it that way, unless you would put it on gentle. And then, you know, you take it out and, and then everything Mushes, mashes together. Same way with this. These threads here kind of spread out. They're, they're under tension and they're also under tension on each side. So when you take the weaving off of the loom, it relaxes and kind of shrinks. But the strings can still be um, not really, you know, like settled in to where they're supposed to be because they're all under tension. And so when you wash it and then um, it dries, hang it to dry, something like that, and um, it all kind of comes together. So that's the explanation of that part of weaving, which I haven't talked about, I guess. But yeah, so what I was doing was weaving uh, this and trying to figure out how many threads per back and forth I should weave to make a square. All these light cords are hanging down. I have so many light cords. I'm going to put this back in the little, um, tripod and I'm going to weave it a little bit there's the old chair over there that I was sitting in had that chair for a long time it, it that chair over there that old wooden chair about to fall apart it's actually a Queen Anne chair you know it was made about uh, 1830s maybe, so 1840s. It was when Queen Anne was the ruler of England. So that chair was made at that time. You can get knockoffs of that chair now, but that is actually a chair that was made at that time. Used to have four of them, but you know, I'm hanging on to that one. Okay, I gotta weave. I might do a little talking while I'm weaving. Or I talk before I weave. I went to the doctor today, General, just going uh, to see how things are. And I had blood tests, you know, like three bottles of blood was drawn uh, last week. And then he was going to, they were going to be tested. He's going to look at them and see what's going on. I was a little bit worried because I was afraid my 
uh, cholesterol might be a little high. And I don't want, I don't like taking medicine. I prevent, I rather uh, try to, you know, find another way of solving my health problems without medicine, really. And I was so happy, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's like, um, I'm just going to start reading. But my cholesterol, he's, I, I was afraid it was going to be a little high. Maybe not extremely high, but high enough that I would have to watch my, uh, what I eat, you know, a little bit more than I do. But it turns out that um, he said my cholesterol was perfect. That just blew me away. He said it was perfect. So with the combination of eating um, you know, food that's not uh, fried or fatty or which would, you know, but sometimes I still do. I'll eat the bacon, I'll eat bacon occasionally, but I don't have it here in the house, but, you know, I might buy bacon every two months and I need to stop this because this is not going right. But I'm still just, uh, so let me do this. This should do, this is not really, I'm not making anything that I'm going to keep. This is just a test. Okay, well now it's working right. Um, so, Cholesterol was fine. Perfect, he said. I ran out of high, uh, blood pressure medicine about a week ago, so I hadn't been taking any of that. But my blood pressure, when he took it today, was okay. But, you know, he still refilled my blood pressure medicine. But I, I know with my blood pressure, if I get out do things, exercise, do the things I want to do, keep my mind busy, um, you know, I always hate to say it, but um, about eating, eating is a very important thing, it's so hard to really eat, um, there's so much temptation, you know, so much convenience of, you know, buying something that's frozen or, and all you have to do is stick it in a microwave oven or put something else on it or do this. But, you know, uh, since Terry and I, we don't live together, I get to eat the way I want to. And um, the way I like to eat is just kind of make everything by, you know, scratch. And that's pretty much what I do. I mean, for a lot of my lifetime, I worked in a country French restaurant in Atlanta, and my job was to uh, make the soups and the specials. And it was a very nice restaurant. And um, I would be in charge of making soups and the specials. We'd have to have a different special every day, and we would have to have different soups every day. I was required to make a clear soup and a cream soup. So I love to cook. I think cooking is, I'm just leaving now and talking, but cooking is an act of love. 
when I cooked even at the restaurant, it was called the Country Place. And it was a country French restaurant in Atlanta, close to the art museum. And we used fresh vegetable, you know, you'd have to, if I made anything, you know, let's say a soup. If I made chicken soup, chicken noodle soup, I would have to go get, the, we had chicken breast. So I just have to get the, it's like, you know, 20 pounds of chicken breast, kind of cut it up, and, you know, make the soup from scratch. Cut up onion, celery, carrot. You know, name any kind of soup I can make it from scratch. But anyway, this is a long video, but you know, that's okay. I'm just talking. I think I needed to talk. But yeah, but besides my, I'm just playing now, I don't care as far as this goes. I'm not following the pattern right now. I'm just, if I follow the houndstooth pattern, I have to count the threads. It's like three black and three white. Three black and three white. I don't feel like doing that right now, but this is going to be nice anyway. Um, yeah, I just thought and it is. I think uh, cooking is an act of love. And it was very creative. I mean, gosh, all those fresh fruits and vegetables and everything that you wanted, you know. And just go into the refrigerator or the freezer and just get the stuff out and make about, I would make about, About 20 gallons of soup, I guess. I would make about 20 gallons of clear soup each day and 20 gallons of a cream soup. And we didn't really use, I didn't use cream, I used half and half. But oh, it was good. I remember when I would get off work, I would walk to down the, uh, it'd be like a atrium in a high rise building it was in and people knew that I did the soup so when I would walk down the uh, you know through the atrium going home the people would say oh you know I, when are you going to make the tuna mushroom soup again you know when are we going to have this stuffed chicken breast again or you know that kind of thing so it was very nice But anyway, uh, so that's what I did. So that's why, you know, I can whip something out and it's good. You know, I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to talk anymore about what people eat. It doesn't really, I'm just, you know, whatever makes me feel good and what I like to eat is what I eat. What other people eat don't matter to me. So, um... Yeah, but my, yes, so my cholesterol was perfect. You know, my kidney thing, whatever that is, you know, was perfect. You know, my, uh, what other else? Liver, fantastic. Uh, electrolytes, I mean, as crazy as hell as I am, which sometimes I know I am, and sometimes... You know, that's just where I, you know, I just try to be myself and that's it. But sometimes myself isn't, sometimes too good. <laughs> but I'm working on it. So besides um, electrolytes, um, you know, no anemia at all whatsoever, nothing. So I told the doctor, I said, um, well, that's not bad for a 72-year-old. I mean, a 72-year-old. What do you mean? See, I have, I have dyslexia. I'm a little autistic. 
I'm a little um, ADHD. So, especially with words, I can get those things mixed up. I am not 72, I am 70. So, um, I said, you know, for a 70 year old guy, that's not bad. And he said, uh, those test results would be good for a 30 year old. <laughs> so, that really made me feel nice. But I told him, well, I kind of acted like I was 12 most of the time. So, anyway. But yes, I'm, and um, there were some other things, you know, Terry and I were having to do and deal with and things like that. And, you know, um, I could talk about those, but, you know. It's okay. We're figuring it out. Everything's fine. <clears throat> this is actually going to be really nice. This weaving that I'm weaving now. I mean, this like first three inches is the uh, helm's tooth, and I will make a couple of helm's tooth things, but um, I don't repeat things. Like if I make like, I won't make two helm's tooth shawls on this. I will just make one because I don't like repeating myself. Um, so that's that. Um, oh, I, a little snake. I have a little snake out in my uh, pond. The two big snakes must have went away, but I have a snake that's just about that size, and it sits in the right hand, the left hand side of the pond where there's that uh, lily pad is, and the one that was blooming kind of pinkish the other day. And that little snake snaze, stays down in there. And see, that little snake won't eat my fish. And so I like the little snake. The little snake is, you know, my friend. <laughs> so I like the snake. I mean, I like the big snakes, too. I mean, I, I love the snakes. They have, I mean, the poisonous snakes have their place, and, you know, their place is in the round here. It's, you know, out farther in the wild and here. So, hmm. Oh, and there was a box. I don't know what I can call this now. It's a turtle. You know, it's not one of those uh, turtles that are in the water, like a snapping turtle, or, you know, it's flat and, you know, look kind of green and icky. Or, you know, I don't know what they like to fight. But this is one of the, it's a round turtle with, you know, a high shell. I guess maybe that's called a box turtle. Maybe. A terrapin, maybe. But anyway, I saw one, I saw one of those in my fish pond yesterday also. And I thought, well, maybe it might have, you know, like walked to the side and maybe kind of maybe slip down into there and because I don't know if they so it was down there so I don't know if it can get out so I, after I do this I'm going to go out and see and move with the uh, lily pad that is close to and see and I'm going to get it out of the water this past winter I had a um, uh, morning dove and I've got like a square uh, bird feeder out there and I went out there when it was real cold one morning and I put some feed down in the bird feeder and then I, I touched some feathers and I looked down and there was a morning dove inside of that feeder so I thought well Maybe it's just getting warm. Maybe it's, you know, that's where it wants to be. So I thought, well, I'll just leave it there. And um, But later on in the evening, I'll go out and check because it's going to get really, really, that was a very cold. 
So I went out there again, and I did, and I would touch it, but it wouldn't, it couldn't fly. It was stuck, you know. It was in that thing. It got in that bird feeder because it was hungry, but once it got in, it couldn't get out. So, uh, and I realized that because when I shook it, I mean, that thing would have just flown away. So, you know, I reached down in there and pulled out and just kind of let it go. Well, that's all I'm going to do now. Um, I'll weave some more on that later today. I need to make it about eight feet long. I don't know what it's going to be like. It'll be stripes or something. And then the next weaving I do will be a hound's tooth check. So... Well, it was good talking to you guys, and everything's going good here. It's raining a little bit outside. You might hear the raindrops on the windows of the greenhouse. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.